Hi everyone, this is Ross again, and this is the second video in the series of uh, introduction to ggleap. And in this video, we're going to cover logging into the client for the first time. Uh, so we can see that there are options to create a gamer account on the client itself. And I should just repeat that employee login, which you will have already received from us, will not work to log into the client because this is aimed at gamers and there's a separate gamer system. So you will need a gamer account to log in, or you can also log in with a guest account, which I'll cover in a second as well. Uh, and there are a few ways to log into the client. You can either click on one of the SSO buttons. So you can either click on the Facebook or go Google here, even though it says log in, if an account that doesn't exist, it will automatically create one. So it's a very big QR code because of the amount of data that we're sending. Um, and I can refresh and get a new one. Um, but basically, if the user scans this QR code with their phone and they have an account in your center, it will automatically log them in. Otherwise, it will uh, automatically create an account and prompt the user for some additional details that you may require, um, such as a phone number or um, any of the other uh, user configuration options that are on the web admin. Um, it's also possible to click here and more explicitly have an option to register at least buttons essentially do, do, do the same uh, functionality as the previous buttons, but it's just a little bit more clear for the user that they can create an account here. Also, you can create an account manually. So if somebody doesn't want to use SSO um, and is happy to just uh, put in a whole bunch of details, then they can do it on this section as well. Uh, finally, another way to create an account is on the web admin itself. So if you prefer to create your gamer accounts at reception, for example, then you can do that. Uh, because I'm in a development environment, I can bring over the web ad the web admin on top of the client, which is not something that you can normally do. Uh, and this is just the dashboard that has a single PC connected to it at the moment, um, PC5. Um, I can click on the status here to perform actions on this PC. So if I need to um, perform actions, this is how I can do it. So I can actually log in a user here or log in a guest. Um, I can change some settings in the PC. I can restart it, lock it, shut it down. Um, I can also put to admin mode, which essentially means to to kill the client and put um, computer onto Windows desktop. I can also remote remote access if I need to do some administrative actions, take a screenshot, launch a remote application, or show the task manager if I need to see running applications in order to uh, terminate any of those. If there's a game that has frozen or something like that, it's quite useful to have. Um, there's also a graphical view of the center as well, so. I can put a background image on here um, of my gaming center, for example, uh, and then I can organize my PCs in a way that um, suits the layout of my center. So if, if this is particularly useful if you have a lot of PCs, because when you have a list uh, of you know 100 PCs, it can be quite difficult to manage. Whereas on this view, you can um, you can zoom out, you can create rooms. So for example, if I create a, let me just resize this and create a, VIP room. Uh, if I put that over here, I can pop this computer in it. And now um, you can see the PC5 is included as a VIP room. And I can select this room if I just want to see this room. Uh, and from here again, I can look, click on this PC to perform actions. So uh, just to show you some of the functionality on the uh, on the dashboard. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and create an account and log into the system. Now there are, again, a few ways of doing this. We can do it in the users section itself. We can add a user. Um, or there's a little shortcut on the dashboard. So I'm going to go ahead and call this user ggdemo2. Just get some random details here. And I'll leave anything that's not mandatory blank for now. Uh, and then I'll save and shop. So saving and shop takes me directly to the checkout point of sale system for adding time to gamer accounts. Now we have put some default values in here and these are really just to help you understand the system and guide you, but we fully expect you to change these numbers to whatever way you want to suit your business. You can you know, have um, standard pricing, which is one hour, two hour, four hours. Uh, and as we'll go over shortly, there are a lot of um, custom configurations that you might want to do as well. So perhaps you have off peak pricing on a certain day, um, or maybe you have VIP computers and they have all, you know, there's all sorts of different complex uh, pricing mechanisms that you might have in there, certainly all covered in our system. 
And but for today in this demo, I'm just going to add four hours to this account, and I'm going to just pay cash, which produces a receipt that I can print. Okay, and that's it. So I have now created a gamer account called GG Demo Two, and I've added four hours to that account, and I'm now going to log into the, the client for the first time. Okay, so what's happening here is that the system has detected that yes, there is an account that has that exists, but as it's a new account, there are some other run mandatory fields that we need to include here. Uh, just to bring over the web administrator again for a second to see why these particular fields are coming up. If I go into the settings and go to center configuration and then into user details configuration, there is a section here where we can decide which pieces of information are required to be collected on the web administrator if the account is created there, or on the client if the player tries to log in and a mandatory field or require field has not been populated. Um, and then we can actually, uh, we can add our own custom fields here as well. So it's, you can choose from any of the defaults that we have um, and you can choose if they should be visible or required um, or just add your own. Um, so for the demo environment and the default, these are the required fields, but you can change those. And I'm just gonna put in random numbers here. And these are the terms and services, which we can click to see the GC circuit terms of service, but you can also add your own terms of service if you want to require your users to select that as well. Okay, so this is the default setup for the GC Leap client. It, it's not quite full screen just because of the demo environment that I'm in, but on a 1080, uh, or 4K or 2K screen, um, you know, there would be no slider here and this would be shown as full screen. So just to um, clarify that. Um, so by default, the home screen will show the five most popular games in GG circuit if it is a new center. Um, if your center has been running for a while, it'll start showing the top five games in your location. And then as the user starts to play games, it will start showing the player's top five games. So that's how the, the logic works there. You'll see I've been demoing a little bit here. So uh, whenever a, a new person creates an account and logs into your uh, environment for the first time, it'll actually announce that to everybody else and else everyone can see that a new user has logged in and then anyone can give them a high five and then that person can high five them back. And it's just a kind of a way to help build a community uh, for new users. And also just as part of this community section, um, as other interesting things are happening in your center, they will be announced here as well. So if a player redeems a prize or, or does well in a competition or anything that we're that that you decide is interesting can come up here as sort of a community announcement so that everyone starts to learn who other players are in your environment and it helps build up your community. On the left-hand side here, you'll notice that I have two coins. And um, by default, I'm earning one coin per minute, which can be fully customized on the web admin. And players can also earn uh, coins depending on how well that they play in our leaderboards, which I'll get to in a second. You can also configure the prizes in the prize vault, um, decide what they are and how much they cost. So we just have a bunch of details here, sorry, defaults here to give you a rough idea of, of some recommended options or options that you can kind of play around with. Um, if I go to the main uh, games menu, oh, sorry, one thing I should clarify, this default image at the bottom and also the background image which is video which is playing and that's all fully customizable this area in the bottom middle can be a video it can be a slideshow of videos it can be a slideshow of images it can be a, a discord qr code um, it can link to web pages so it's it's very very customizable the background image is as well uh, and i'll cover options of how to do that in a second so under the games menu and um, the background image here fortnite this actually will show the most popular game um, Again, the same logic. So if, if this is a brand new center, it'll show the most popular game in GG Circuit. If your center has been running for a while, it'll show the most popular um, game in your center for a new user. And then once the user has been playing for a while, it'll show their uh, most popular game so they can just quickly hit play now. Um, and I'll just, you know, this is the, the, the games menu that we have. As you can see, there's, uh, there's a video hoverover uh, for each of the games. And if we click on the game, um, it'll bring us to the launcher itself. Um, Games can have multiple launchers sometimes, so it can be launching with Steam or Epic. Um, you can also have auto login so that if you want to have uh, what we call house 
accounts or center accounts that you want to pre-buy for your gamers to use, then we once that's been configured on the admin, then just simply pressing a button here will automatically log players into uh, an account that you own. And then when they finish playing with that account, it will return that account to the pool for somebody else to use. And so all of the games that we're seeing here are games that you would have configured um, on your web admin. So by default, we've enabled the top games just so that you can have an idea of how the UX should look. Um, but you may not have um, you know, Battlefield 1, for example, installed on your, uh, on your GG Rock server or on your local drives, in which case you would not want this game to appear here. The idea is that the games that you have installed on your systems that are ready to play, they should be the ones that are shown on the UX. Uh, and you can simply go into the web administrator to decide um, which games uh, that are the ones that you want to display. On the left-hand side, we have a bunch of filters here. So again, center accounts will show any uh, games for which you have uh, set up uh, auto login. And um, you can also set a filter for free to play. So with each game that we have on our system, there are default tags, but you can also change those tags so that players can filter games in a way that you would uh, want them to. Uh, on the apps section, again, I just have one app at the moment, which is Steam, but you can just populate this with any apps that you want, including web browsers or tools or, or anything like that. Um, the shop, there is an integrated point of sale system. And so this is where players can actually buy time um, or um, food and drink beverages from your location. This will inform the, the administrator. Um, but if they do buy time from their account, um, they could just pay uh, here. I, I need to configure some options before I can pop properly demonstrate the point of sale system, but it is possible for gamers to order food or drink or add time to their account and pay from the client PC by scanning QR code. Um, or it can summon a member of staff to come over to take cash. Um, th there's a few options there. Uh, and also on the prizes section, although I don't have enough coins because I've only got six, when a player has enough coins to redeem a prize, um, for example, one free R, a digital prize like that, um, once they redeem it, the coins are automatically reduced and the player will automatically get that time without a member of staff needing to do anything, although there is a notification to tell you that it has happened. And finally, on the leaderboards itself, you can see that by default here, we're showing four, these, these are the four games that we're tracking stats for. By default, it'll show the players who are, who are in my center and are, and are playing today. Um, so I can change that to weekly. Uh, or monthly, it's still not going to show anything because I, this is a brand new center, but I can start filtering by um, by other regions. Um, so there's obviously a lot of data here from um, different centers around the world um, that you can compete with. And you can also, you can set a prize for your players whenever they're competing against all of the centers in Europe, for example, in Fortnite, you can decide that 200,000 coins is the prize purse and whoever comes first gets 40,000 whoever comes second gets 30,000 whoever comes third all the way down to 21st will win 20,000 coins um now it's, this is quite an interesting system because you can just you can decide what the payout is and if your players let's imagine that you advertise that you're, you're running a, a a monthly fortnight leaderboard if you come first you get 40,000 coins but if your players don't come in the top 21, you don't actually give away any coins. So it's up for you to decide, you know, how, how, it's, it's really a marketing challenge. How, how many coins would you like to uh, say is the prize? And then think about the actual likelihood of some of your players making it into the top 20 whenever there are, I don't know if I can scroll down in my VM, but there will be just thousands of players that will be involved in this. Um, through automatic data tracking. Um, on, a, on a real PC, I would actually be able to um, see the bottom of this leaderboard and scroll through pages, but just because I'm in my demo environment here, I actually can't do that, it's just scrolling me forever. Um, but basically, yeah, you can you can choose what the prizes are, and if your players don't make the top of the leaderboard, then you don't have to pay them out. Um, and so it's up to you to decide how you want to facilitate all of that. Oh, so I can, I can kind of see here a little bit more clearly. So on a, on a daily leaderboard, so this is what's happening this morning, there's a few players involved, and uh, there are there are more coins to be won here as so other people come in. And I think this 
covers the default version of the client. In my next video, I will show how we can actually customize this client to uh, make it more like what, uh, make it more like the brand of, of a gaming center rather than the default cheesy circuit settings. See you in the next one.